All right, well, hello everyone. My name is Lynn Pernil. I'm a luxury wedding photographer, videographer, and educator. I shoot weddings, events, and proposals, but for the sake of time today, I'm gonna to be just talking about wedding photography, which is what I specialize in. I used to live here in Monmouth County. I attended CHS from 2006 to 2010, and now I live in Hudson Valley, New York, so about two and a half hours north of here. And I actually owe my entire career to CHS because this is where I first discovered photography and fell in love with it. Are any of you guys in photo club? I assume they still have it, right? Oh, wow, good. That's where I first fell in love with photography. One of my friends invited me to come to the club with her. I started doing all of the photo of the week challenges and that's what sparked my obsession and I'm still obsessed to this day. After graduating from CHS, I went to Montclair State University on a full merit scholarship. And because I already had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do with my life, I majored in photography and I also decided to minor in business, which turned out to be a really great decision. When you own your own photography business, you spend probably only 20% of your time actually taking photos and the other 80% of the time is all of that businessy stuff. So things like client consultations, going to networking meetings, working on my marketing materials, updating social media, working on my online presence, answering emails and inquiries, writing up contracts and invoices, filing taxes, all of that stuff. I dabbled in a bunch of different types of, of photography. I did events, products, all kinds of photography stuff. Um, but in 2011, I shot my first wedding and that's when I knew that that's what I wanted to specialize in. And then in 2013, I was in the junior, my junior year of college and I was dead set. I wanted to be a wedding photographer. I decided I didn't want to wait until after graduation. I, right then and there, decided to officially legally form my business. And here I am today, 10 years later, I've shot over 250 weddings and I still love what I do. It's a little bit hard to give a typical day in the life of a wedding photographer because it changes based upon the season. Um, during busy season, which is wedding season, that typically happens during spring, summer, and fall, so around April through November, Almost all of my weekends, I'm on location shooting weddings. Then during the week, I am editing all of the photos that I shot during those weddings. After a typical 10 hour wedding day, to actually edit all of those photos takes around six weeks. So a lot of the work is actually at home editing after the wedding itself. And then during the off season, so where, we are, where we're at now, that's when I focus on all of the business stuff that I didn't have time for during busy season. So this is when I do all of that back-end admin work, things like filing taxes, updating my marketing materials, updating my portfolio, website, pricing, and also cleaning and upgrading my equipment. So I'll give you guys a little run rundown of what a typical wedding day looks like. We typically start with the getting ready portion of the day. I typically start with the bride, while my second shooter starts at the groom's location. During this time, we're just getting candid shots of everyone hanging out, the bride getting into her dress, getting all of her accessories on. And we also use this time to photograph all the details, things like the ring, invitations, shoes, bow tie, boutonnieres, the bouquet, shoes, jewelry. A wedding day has a lot of details, most of which took a lot of time or intention for the couple to pick out. So it's your job as a photographer to eternalize them for them, especially if it's something that has sentimental value or something handmade or something like a family heirloom. Before we head out the door, I like to take some solo portraits and then we either head to the first look or the ceremony. A first look is becoming a pretty popular trend these days. It's when the couple shares a private moment when they see each other for the first time before the ceremony itself. And then this also allows us to take all of their portraits together before the ceremony and before all the guests arrive. Then we photograph all of the ceremony details, any decor, the scenery, programs, florals. I would say the ceremony is definitely the most high pressure, nerve wracking part of the day because it's the most sentimental. We have to be on our A game every little second. We have to capture every moment that happens. We really can't miss anything or mess anything up because there's no redos. So you have to capture all of the real time moments as they're happening. But that's also what makes this part of the day so special. There's usually a lot of raw emotions during a ceremony. 
We capture everything that happens during the ceremony, so the vows, the ring exchange, any special moments the couple is doing, and then of course the kiss and the recessional. My favorite part of my job is that every wedding is different. I love seeing all the different ways that different couples infuse their different styles and cultures and personalities on their wedding days. And I think that's partly why I love my job so much and why I'm not tired of it is because it keeps things interesting. Every weekend, every wedding is different. If the couple didn't have a first look and take all of their portraits ahead of time, this is when we would take those. I think the portrait session is probably my favorite part of the day because the rest of the day is like very photojournalistic. I'm kind of like a fly in the wall, but during the portraits, I can actually take my time, interact with the couples, um, really try to bring out their personalities. I get to set them up wherever I want, pick my lighting and my locations. So I get to really bring all my photo skills together during the portraits. And then this is also when we take the wedding party photos and the family photos. Before the reception starts, we like to go into the ballroom or wherever the reception is happening and capturing all of those details, centerpieces, decor, anything that's set up. And the next important part of the day is the reception formalities. So that usually starts with the couple entering the reception, then their first dance, And sometimes there's a special tradition like the hora or a dance circle or some type of performance. And next up is usually the speeches. We focus both on the speaker and reaction shots from the couple. And then after all of those formalities are done, the rest of the night is usually way more low key. Our main job is just to capture all of the joy and energy and all of the fun moments that are happening on the dance floor. Finally, the night usually ends with a cake cutting, and then sometimes the couple will do a special send off at the end of the night, like a sparkler exit. Apart from having photography skills, these are some traits that would make you a really great wedding photographer. Personality is very important. You need to be the kind of person who gets along with everyone. You need to be friendly. Weddings are kind of a high, high pressure, um, highly emotional day, so you need to be the kind of person who has a kind and calming presence. But you also need to be assertive, so especially during family portraits or group shots, you need to be able to command a group. You definitely need to be organized, so you have to make sure that you gather all of the information you need for the wedding day. You need to be very detail-oriented and always prepared. You do need to be the kind of person who thrives under pressure. Like I said, weddings are a very high pressure day. Uh, you need to have great problem solving skills, be good at thinking on your feet and pivoting. You do also need to be physically fit. Weddings are a very physically taxing job. Typically, we're on our feet for 10 hours straight, carrying our equipment with us all day. You usually only get to sit for like five minutes total on a wedding day. Um, so it is very important to be in shape and be healthy. When you're a service-based business, when you're the one providing the service, your body is your most valuable piece of equipment. You also need to be self-motivated when you have your own business. There's no boss keeping you accountable. You need to be the one keeping yourself on top of deadlines. So you do need to be very disciplined and self-motivated. And of course, like I mentioned before, it's always really helpful to be well-rounded. As a business owner, you wear a lot of hats, you do a lot of different types of things, so it's good to have a wide area of knowledge. When I had my portfolio review with the head of photography um, at Mont uh, Montclair State University, the head of the photo department was looking through my portfolio and he could just tell from the work that I had done at CHS that I had already mastered um, all of these basic skills. So he skipped me out of film photography 101, digital photography 101, Photoshop 101. Basically, a lot of the intro level courses that they teach at college, we basically learned all of those skills here. So you are already one step ahead of the curve just by being here. These are my favorite classes that I took here. I know that the names are a little bit different now, but these were the ones that were very relevant and very helpful to me. Like I said, photojournalism, a lot of a wedding day is photojournalistic. That's also the class where I learned about darkroom film photography. So that's where I learned about the basics of photography exposure. Digital photography obviously was very helpful. Almost everything I do is digital photography. And in my computers class, so that's where I learned Photoshop and all of those um, Adobe Creative Suite programs. 
I also loved all of the non-photography related classes I took here. I love digital video. I also offer wedding video in my business, so that was great that I learned that here. I also loved graphic design and web design. I do almost all of my own graphic design work. I design my own website. I design all of my marketing materials myself, so very grateful that I learned all of that here. And I also really loved visual communications. Everything I learned about um, composition, balance, color theory, all of that stuff is, I use all of that when I'm composing my photos and also when I'm styling details before I photograph them. And these are my favorite clubs that I was a part of. Obviously, I mentioned how much Photo Club meant to me. I was also in Skills USA. I was in a couple honor societies, NTHS, NAHS, so National Technical Honor Society, National Art Honor Society. And then I also contributed a bit to the Inkblot, the school newspaper. I would submit photos and stuff um, for the newspaper and for contests and things like that. The best way for you to learn what a career is really like is to witness it firsthand. So I really love that they have the mentorship program here. I mentored for a real world photographer and that's when I learned that solidified that that is what I wanted to do. Um, but even if you learn, if by mentoring you realize, nope, I don't like that industry or I don't want to be that, it's all very valuable to learn. And another piece of advice I have for you guys if you want to be a photographer is to start building up your equipment gradually. For every birthday and holiday and graduation, I would wish for a different camera or different lens or software or piece of equipment. So when I decided to officially start my business, I didn't have to go out there and buy everything all at once. So I definitely recommend building it up gradually. And then finally, the best way to learn is just to go out there and do it. Just start shooting anything and everything, every opportunity that comes your way, say yes to it. Even if you have to do some things for free or for really cheap, um, any way you can gain experience and build your portfolio is very valuable. So that's it. Any questions about photography? Anything at all? Yeah? Uh, how many people are usually with you for the wedding? On a wedding day? Yeah. Um, so it's myself. So if it's a, I have a bunch of different packages, but let's say the couple books just photography. Usually it's two photographers. So myself and my second shooter, who's like my assistant who also shoots photo. Um, if it's a photo and video wedding, if they book both, it'll usually be myself and a second shooter and then one or two videographers as well. And then at the end of the wedding day, I get everybody's files and then I do all the editing and I deliver to the client. And sometimes I'll also have an assistant, so max would be five people on a wedding day, but usually it's like two or three. Anything else? Questions about CHS, college, career, life in general? Did you trust to shoot your wedding? Yes. So, I like I said, I've been in this in this industry for 12 years. It was 11 at the time. I just got married this past October. So a lot of people were like, who's going to shoot your wedding? Um, luckily and unluckily, I know so many photographers. I had so many people I could have picked from. But I ended up going with my friend Lizzie. She's also a photographer like me. She actually also got married the year before, so she knew what it was like to be a photographer and a bride. Um, basically, I chose her because she's very similar to me. The way she shoots is similar, the way she edits is similar, the way she conducts herself on a wedding day is similar, so I felt very comfortable with her. Yeah. Did I see a hand? Yep. Favorite CHS memory? Oh, man. That's <laughs> so hard. Like, I'm getting flooded with memories just like as I'm walking around here. Oh, man. I like, do you guys still do color wars at the end of the year? I love color wars. Um, oh my god, I know. The clubs, the clubs and color wars I think were my favorites. And like I said, all of the, like everything. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I was going to in the beginning you said you mentioned shooting proposals. Yes. Oh, is that, I feel like that's like a different thing because it's like there's surprise and there's like. Yes. Little drama, like how, is it fun? Yes, yeah, that's like, also very fun. Very, very high pressure because wedding day, there's a lot of key moments you can't miss, but uh, when you're shooting a proposal, if you miss the down on one knee moment, you're like, you're screwed. That's what they hired you for. Um, yeah, so very high pressure, but very fun. Um, usually the kind of proposals I shoot are like more like luxury or high end, so I've seen some cool stuff. Um, 
I shot a helicopter proposal where like he took her over a ride in New York City and then landed and there were letters that said, Will you marry me? There was a billboard Times Square proposal where he hired like a flash mob to get it was oh, I've seen like three of them so yeah. <laughs> So that's a good question. Usually that's what they ask is like, well, how will like you be inconspicuous? Usually they're in like a public location, like if it's in New York, a person with a camera is actually less conspicuous than someone without a camera. So I usually just like hide in plain sight. I do a lot of communication and planning beforehand so I know where exactly it's happening, down to like what angle that he'll be like going down on one knee. Um, so a lot of preparation. And then even like the day of, I'll ask him to like text me what they're wearing. Um, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of prep work. Has someone ever said no? No, definitely <laughs> not. I feel like if you're going to do such an epic grand display of love, usually they're in a good place, but you never know. What are some common questions potential clients often ask you? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, they ask, they like to know your experience, so just like how long you've been shooting. They ask you what your style is, so like, so they have an idea of what they're gonna get. Um, they ask what your process is like. They want to know like what it's like to work with you. Sometimes people ask about equipment. Sometimes they can just tell from your work. Um, yeah, questions like that. Yeah. Did you have like a part-time job when you were starting out? It's a great question. So I, looking back on it again, I think because I found out so early during high school what I wanted to do. I never really had a non-photography related job. Everything I've always done has been like little freelance jobs here and there. I did have like more steady, like I was a studio assistant for a photographer. I worked in the photo lab at Montclair. Um, but I've literally always been a photographer because I found out so early, which is pretty awesome. Did you have a love of photography did you experiment in middle school or it all came? It all came from CHS. So when I applied here, I, really, I thought I wanted to be a chef and I wanted to come here because I had a dream of having my own cooking show. So I thought I would get into like broadcast and all that. And then I joined photo club and I was like, oh, forget that. I like photography now. <laughs> so it's literally all CHS. Yeah, very grateful. How many pictures do you take on a wedding day? Oh man. Um, <laughs> So, like I said, I have myself and then a second shooter, but I myself probably take around 4,000, and then they probably take like another one or 2,000. So that's what I take home from a wedding day. Then the next step is to cull them. So I go through them, and I a lot of them is like, you know, click, 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 and you pick the best of that series of shots. So after culling them down, curating, I end up with probably 1,000 photos, and then I edit all of those 1,000. So that's why it takes around six weeks to deliver. Um, like for me, did your first wedding, did you shoot it all like by yourself or did you have other people? Like you know, I actually did. It's funny. Now looking back on my first wedding makes me laugh so much because at the time I thought I made so much money off of it. I charged like I think two or three hundred dollars, which is hysterical because like I literally charge more than that per hour now. <laughs> but at the time I felt like so intimidated. Um, I shot it by myself. I think it was an 11 hour day. I shot photo and video. It was it's comical to look back on, but that's the way to do it. At the time, you raise your prices as you know that your worth and your experience and your gear goes up. So yeah, it's funny now, but at the time it felt right. So no regrets. <laughs> What's the furthest place you traveled to shoot the wedding? Oh, good question. So I do mostly local, uh, which I consider local. It's like a two hour radius of where I live. So Hudson Valley, North Jersey, Long Island, New York City, that general area. But I do occasionally shoot destination weddings. Um, the farthest I've shot is Jamaica. I had a Jamaica wedding last summer, so that was really fun. Um, yeah, but I, I actually think there's so many beautiful venues just in this area. Some people love destination weddings, and that's like primarily what they do, but I, I actually love the tri-state area. We have a lot of beautiful locations here. And what would you say the best starter equipment is for portraits? For portraits? Um, that's a good question. So. Camera does matter, but I would say cameras become obsolete quicker. Like, you know, they come out with newer models, the older ones aren't as valuable. So I would invest in good lenses. Um, for portraits, I would say the longer the lens, the more flattering. 
So for instance, a 35 millimeter is kind of like what your eye sees, it's a little bit wide. So something like a 50 millimeter or an 85 millimeter or even longer, those are beautiful for portraits. Yeah, of course. Um, in the beginning, I think you said you like also consider yourself like an educator. Right? Yes. yes. What does that look like for you? Like, yeah, you yeah. Educate? So in 2017, um, I like I feel like that girl from Mean Girls that I just have a lot of feelings. <laughs> um, I like so when you're a business owner, you're, it's basically yourself. I'm a solopreneur. I'm the only person in my business. So you know, like when you like I don't know, discover a really great product, you just want to like tell people about it. That's how I feel like with business. Um, whenever, I, it's just, it feels lonely in business sometimes to like be learning these things, discovering like how to build your business. So I just had this passion to want to share it with others. Um, so I put together my first workshop and then I have like online courses. I have an educational website, blog posts, mostly teaching photography and the business side of things. Um, and then I do things like this. I speak to colleges and schools and professional organizations. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. How long did it take you to develop your business and also like did you go like straight into that or did you have to like Yeah. I would definitely say it was gradual. Um so I did kind of just dive right in and start in high school. I took little jobs here and there, which I considered lots of money at the time, but it was like twenty bucks, fifty bucks. Um so I did, I just started, you know, charging appropriately for my skill level at the time and then gradually shop more important things, charge more for it, develop my equipment, develop my skills. So it was definitely very gradual, uh, which I think is was part of why I'm so successful is that I did it slowly over time. Um, yeah, like I said, I started shooting, got my first camera in 2007, shot my first wedding in 2011, officially started my business in 2013. So it's been gradual. How do you handle weddings when there's bad weather? It's a great question, yeah. Um, luckily, in the tri-state area, usually, it doesn't rain all day, every day. Like, there's usually a gap where it's dry, so we will kind of think on our feet, try to plan things, move things around so that we can go out when it's dry. Or we have these, like, clear or white umbrellas we can use. Um, or we, I like, what I always like to say is limitations are opportunities in disguise. So sometimes when it's raining, it'll force you to shoot inside. And maybe that's what like a typical photographer wouldn't shoot inside at that venue because, oh, it's so pretty outside. So sometimes being forced to do something different will cause you to innovate and create really beautiful pictures indoors. So it's just about being flexible and seeing what you got and making it work. How have you dealt with bad clients? <laughs> um, so, you know, it's funny. That's like always one of the questions I get is like, oh, do you work with bridezillas and stuff? <laughs> I think you attract what you put out there. So if you're very like, oh, this is my fee. If it goes one minute over, I'm going to charge you. Like if you're just like a nasty person, you'll attract nasty people who nickel and dime and are critical. So just by being like a human and treating your clients with empathy, they usually are attracted to you because of that. So they generally are nice people. Um, but like you can't control it all. Weddings also bring together a lot of different people and personalities. Um, I would just say that like the day's not about me. Like I just kind of put my ego in my pocket. I'm there to serve them. If there's anything I can do to kind of diffuse situations, I just I'm just always positive and try to be like it's my job to just be there and capture things and be positive. So yeah, I get to see some things, but it's really not as bad as as one might think. Weddings are a very happy day, and and brides are not bridezillas. Like I really in my whole career I might have had like one difficult client, but clients are great. Favorite wedding you've shot? Favorite. I literally can't say. There's like, I have favorite aspects of different weddings. Like what you saw was basically like a rundown of my favorites. But there's like no one wedding where I was like, this one was perfect. What I love is just like seeing, oh, what this person did with the flowers, or this person's dress, or this cake. So I like little aspects of everything. Yeah. Um, what was your first camera? My first camera was a Nikon D80. I don't remember the specs of it anymore, but it's like, it's shameful how many megapixels, it's like less than our, significantly less megapixels than our iPhones these days. At the time it was a pro camera though, and it was great, I shot, I shot weddings on it, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah? Oh, um, okay, so do you think it's like important to focus on like a specific type of photography, like a specific um, like range of what you do? Or like That's a really great question. Or is it more general? 
That's a great question. So I think when you're starting out, I would not specialize too much. I would take whatever comes your way, shoot it all, one, because income is great. Uh, it's great to learn what you like. So just accept everything. Don't niche down too much. Um, and then as you learn, like, oh, I hate this, I love this, you can start niching down that way. And then as you find something like, oh, this is my specialty, this is what I love doing, this is what people want to hire me for, and then you can specialize, you know, that way. Was that a Jonas brother in one of those pictures? Yes. <laughs> Good eye. Um, I thought I saw it. He's the oldest one. What is that? Kevin? I don't know my Jonas like that well. He, so the Jonas brothers, I don't know if you guys know, they're from New Jersey originally. So the bride and the groom, I guess, were just like family friends. He, only he was there, not the other ones. Oh, actually, I think the couple was friends with his wife. So that's how he was there. Yep. Yeah, I've shot, oof, I've shot Meryl Streep. I did like a corporate event where she was on the red carpet for a couple seconds. Um, Eliza Deshku, she was like in Bring It On and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Christy Turlington was also at like a red carpet event. Ruben Studdard was at like a nonprofit event. I think that's it for celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. How do you handle the overlap of editing and shooting every single It's tough. It's tough. Uh, busy season is like, this time of year I get to like breathe and like sleep in and relax. And then during like spring, summer, fall, it, it, it does get overwhelming. Um, I, I guess just like during the weekend, hydrate a lot, you know, sleep as much as you can the night before, just be ready to give it your all. And then during the week, I don't know if you saw there, I'm just like in sweats. Coffee, in my zone, editing, try to relax as much as possible during the week. It's tough, it's tough. It's very like condensed. So like my hustle season is very hard and then my slow season is really chill. So it's a little bit of both. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do finances like work with the busy and off season? That's a really good question. So what helps me a little bit is that when couples book me, I charge a deposit. So it's like a retainer that like, you know, I don't book anyone else, they're locked in. So that helps kind of like even out the spikes. But yeah, there is actually a big spike of income during busy season, and then a little bit more of a lull during winter season. Like I said, the deposits help because people typically book in the off season, so it levels it out a little. But then that's also why I shoot things like other events, proposals, I do a little bit of portraits. Um, so that does help kind of like fill in those gaps. But that's a great question. Like I said to her, being a wedding photographer is not very like steady, the same every day, smooth. It's very like it peaks and valleys all the time. So you have to be able to be the kind of person to roll with that. How many months or years in advance do you book? I was just talking to Alex, my assistant, about that. So back in the day, it was usually like a year in advance people would contact you. After the pandemic, it was very like last minute, oh, it's safe, let's go. So now it's like anything goes. Yeah.